Good afternoon. We have just uh, finished an extraordinary meeting of NATO defense ministers focused on the consequences of Russia's invasion of uh, Ukraine. We addressed our support uh, for Ukraine, the severe costs we are imposing on Russia, and NATO's work to strengthen our defenses uh, now and for the years to come. Our close partners Finland, Sweden and Georgia and the European Union joined us for the first session. And Ukrainian Defence Minister Oleksiy Resnikov described in stark terms the death and destruction caused by President Putin's war. The determined resistance of the Ukrainians against the invasion and the importance of our continued support. We all paid tribute to the courage of uh, the Ukrainian people and the Ukrainian armed forces. NATO allies and partners have supported Ukraine with equipment and training for many years. We are helping Ukraine to uphold its fundamental right to self-defense, freedom and democracy with significant amounts of critical military equipment. Today, ministers agreed that we must continue to provide significant support to Ukraine, including with uh, military supplies, financial help and humanitarian aid. NATO allies and partners are also hosting millions of Ukrainian refugees. President Putin must stop this war immediately, withdraw his forces now, and engage in diplomacy in good faith. NATO is responding to this crisis with speed and unity. And next week, Allied heads of state and government will meet for an extraordinary NATO summit. We will address both our immediate response and the changes we need to make for our longer-term security. Moscow should be in no doubt. NATO will not tolerate any attack on Allied sovereignty or territorial integrity. We have already activated our defence plans to shield the Alliance, increase our readiness and deploy troops uh, from both sides of the Atlantic. There are now hundreds of thousands of forces at heightened alert across the Alliance. 100,000 US troops in Europe and around 40,000 troops under direct NATO command, mostly in the eastern part of the alliance. Major increases to our deterrence and defense will require major investments. Allies need to invest a minimum of 2% of GDP on defense. And I welcome that allies such as Germany and Denmark have already made important announcements on more investments and faster timetables. We also need to spend more together. NATO common funding is the essential enabler that allows us to work together. It is a force multiplier for national defence efforts. And it shows solidarity as allies. At this critical moment for our security, unity between North America and Europe in NATO is more important than ever.